Hey, good evening. It's uh, Saturday night, August 29th. I'm going to continue tonight with Psalm 2. And again, the idea here in the psalm is God is in control. Christ is in control. Just as the apostles grasped, it, grasped this in Acts 4, and Peter and John were able to comfort the brothers, but the Pharisees really weren't in control. The Jewish leaders really weren't in control. The Romans weren't in control. God was in control. So he quotes Psalm 2, and we read about that this morning when it opens, when it says, why do the nations rage? Why are they plotting against God and his anointed one? And one of the things that we saw very vividly this morning in the first half, first six verses of Psalm 2, is this intense hatred that the world has to God. Jesus warns us about this. He says, if they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. <clears throat> the world hates the rule of God. And this psalm makes that abundantly clear. But then we have a response to that in these last half of the psalm. This is God, the covenant God, speaking to Christ, his son. And he says to Christ, Let me tell you about the decree, Yahweh said to me. You are my son. I have begotten you this very day. And Dale Roth Davis points out, he believes that's referring back to verse 6, for I have installed my king in Zion, my holy hill. The tight connection between installed and begotten, that this is the day that Christ is reigning. And then the God the Father is speaking to his son, ask me and I will give the nations as your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You will break them down with iron and with an iron rod, and you will smash them to pieces like a clay pot. Now that may sound kind of strong, but remember back in verse three, the response of the rulers of the world to God. Let us rip off their fetters. Let us throw off their cords. That's the world's response. God's response back is to Christ. God speaking to Christ, you will break them with an iron rod and smash them to pieces like a clay pot. And then, <clears throat> and then the narrative shifts from speaking to Christ, now it is speaking to the kings of earth. And again, I like Davis's direct tone here. And now you kings, wise up, accept instruction, you rulers of the earth, serve Yahweh with fear and rejoice with trembling. See, make no doubt here, God is in control. Christ rules. And then verse 12, kiss the son, which is a sign of subservience, of someone who is recognizing he's been conquered. Kiss the son, lest he become angry, and you perish in your tracks, for his wrath ignites quickly. God is no one to be toyed with. But again, like the end of the first section, there is hope about installing Christ. Here, we have that same hope. The last line of the psalm. Oh, the joy of all who take refuge in him. So yes, he's this mighty God, this, this great ruler. But for those who take refuge in him, for those who acknowledge his lordship, his kingship, there is great joy and peace. So this world, yes, it hates God, but God is not threatened. He's not upset. He's not crushed. This God is in control. He continues to reign, continues to rule. And all these things he brings under submission to his decree. His royal son carries out his wishes. And that's happening today, whether it's the political front, whether it's the unrest front, whether it's the COVID front, whether it's the storms and the um, oceans, whether it's people thinking that they can do whatever they want in this life, God remains in control. And his son has been given this control by God, because Jesus is the one who reigns. He is the King. He is the Lord. In Him, all things hold together. In Him, we live and move and have our being. And that's our hope this night. God is a good, faithful, 
righteous God, Christ rules. And in that, our hearts can rejoice and prepare our heart for worship tomorrow. Think well about these things tonight. Rest in peace, knowing that Jesus Christ is on the throne, doing the job that his Father gave him to do, to bring all things to the point where the number of people that God wants to come to know him, they will come just as he has decreed. And the world would take shape as God has ordered. And that's a blessing, and that's a reason for peace. You have a great night, and we'll see you Monday morning. Bye-bye.